The kingdom of God is moving mightily, reaching the lost in multitudes all over the world. In partnering with this ministry, you will be part to equip, empower and commissioning sons and daughters moving in the power of Jesus Christ into the world by demonstrating the kingdom of God. Together we can do it. Sowing into the kingdom of God has been made easy. Visit our website www.identitychurch.cosa and partner now. You can do it via EFT with the full Woeing banking details showing on your screen or you can use any of these other options like Zapper or PayPal. With your seed we are changing destinies together. Welcome to Identity Church. We're going to have communion this morning, but after this sermon, I believe that uh, we will sit at the feet of Jesus and we will partake in the table that the Lord has made, but uh, we're going to do it after the word of God being preached. Say faith comes by hearing. Hearing what? The word of God. And this morning, I want to tell you that if there's anything you have to take home this morning is, is that you need to hear the word of God. Because it's the word of God that is the truth. And the word of God says the truth shall set you free. The reality is most people are caught up in bondage. And they are caught up in situations. And they are caught up in storms. And they are not free because the word of God is not, not controlling their life. And let me explain this. The Word of God is not there to control you in, in a, a spirit of manipulation and condemnation. But if the Word of God is in control of your life, you will live a life of freedom. You will live a life of abundance. You will live a life of love. You will live a life of peace. Because obedience takes you into the peace of God. And the reality is, most of us sleep at night and we are tossing and we are turning. And we are finding ourselves worried and depressed. And we are so much at the point in time that we say, I want to give up. Do you know, uh, last night I got a message. A young lady. I mean, she's a woman. She's a young woman. They caught her hanging herself on a tree. At what point do you need to come in your life that you want to give up your life? It is when the word of God is absent in your life. And I pray this morning that you will receive the word of God, that the word shall set you free, that the spirit of suicide will have no effect on you. I mean, this woman has children. A young daughter. Not older than five years old. Where a mother decides, I am up and I'm out. I am done. And it breaks my heart because what is the church doing? Where are we finding ourselves running our own race and not worrying about the people that needs the word of God? Because of our own agendas and we are failing. I'm telling you now, this world is a mess because the body of Christ is busy failing. And listen, I'm telling you right now, revival is coming. But you need to be hungry to change a person's life. That the woman will not go and hang herself on a tree. You need to be the light. You need to be the salt. You need to be the answer. You need to be the word. You have to be full of the word of God to say, Lord, let me be the solution to a person's problem. But the problem is that we are not full of the word of God. And when people come to you with situations, you say, listen, I am so much stressed out about my own situation. I cannot help you. Because there's an absence of the word of God. Do you know as the body of Christ, we need to be armor bearers. We need to be disciples going out to the lost to set the captives free, heal the sick. And the reality is we are so caught up in our own, we are drowning in our own pain and sorrows. May the word of God set people free this morning. May God uplift you. May God anoint you. May God empower you. I don't know if there's somebody this morning that say, hold on. The past is in the past and Jesus is in the future. And when I have him in my life, say never quit. But the problem is, many people are not even chasing their destiny. They are chasing revival. When you chase destiny, you will be part of revival. But yes, here's something. Some people are not even chasing revival. 
They are chasing survival. They are trying to survive. We stand up in the morning and all we want to do is survive. We are no longer hungry for revival. We are hungry for to survive. May God break that mentality of surviving. May God break the mentality of limitation. May God break the mentality of I don't have enough. May God this morning set you free in the mighty name of Jesus. That is why we are doing this, this message this morning. Destiny choices. Say destiny choices. I made a video this morning. Whether you want to or not, life will force you to make choices. Do you know that? And do you know what? Can I be honest with you? Do you know how many mistakes I have made making the wrong choices? I'm not talking about when you tell your wife something that she didn't want to hear. Because that can be made up with nice coffee in the bed or a nice breakfast. Or I, I, I'm, I'm talking about serious choices a person makes. That takes you in line with your destiny or it can take you out of your destiny. This is where I'm talking about, you know, a lot of people find themselves in the permissible will of God. Meaning, in Afrikaans, the to Lord Barreville. It means that the it's not his perfect will, but you know, you're finding in yourself in a situation where you know that you're not in the perfect will of God, but you know there's love and you know there's grace. But the question is, does that help your destiny at all? And then obviously you get people that's out of the will of God completely. Destiny choices are being made out of three dimensions. Say three dimensions. Are you hungry this morning to hear the word of God? That it shall set you free that you can make choices from the right dimension. Say dimensions. Say levels. Say choices. Say I need to make the right choices. You know, Saturday morning I, I prayed with the team that was here. And specifically I prayed yesterday morning for the spirit of suicide. And when I open my phone and I see that people are making decisions out of, you know, that woman was destined to have children. The womb was open. That womb was fruitful. The womb, it is a gift from God. Which means this woman carries destiny, purpose. And making a choice to say, I am done with my destiny. I'm done with my purpose. It's, it, it it is something that's close to my heart because I've battled for years with suicide thoughts. I tried to commit suicide three times and I know at that point in time, it, it was not easy because nobody understood me. The Holy Spirit wasn't in my life. The Word of God didn't guide me. I found my place where I said, I've got the most beautiful children. I love my wife, I love my children, but I found my place where I said, Choosing them is not enough for me. Choosing them is not going to sort out my problems. And I was drowning in my, in my suicidal thoughts. And I battled with it. I used to take my fist and hit it against the walls, break down doors, trying to release anger. I took a knife. I'm carrying the scars where I cut it myself and I saw blood pouring out I remember putting my face through one of these ovens and waking up in hospital and there was blood transfusion that had to take place and I realized that at that point in time in my life I was not making destiny choices that helped my destiny I was making choices from a dimension of a logic dimension that doesn't make sense to me and I was constantly finding myself in this in this war between my mind and my heart because if it doesn't make logic here, I cannot follow it. Because now I'm getting confused. Because my heart says one direction. My mind says another direction. And at that point in time, the Word of God was no, nowhere to be found in my life. Because I didn't even go to church. And the reality is that this woman finds herself at a place and she's not finding truth to the cause. She's not finding the truth to live. Because she doesn't understand her destiny. Do you know how many of you sitting here that you were just, and you don't have to raise your hand, but you can just be honest with yourself. Do you know how many times the devil tells you in a day, give up? 
you know how many times he tells you, just leave everything, just run away, just give everything up? And the only thing that can set you free is when you make choices from the right dimension. Because when you make a choice here, I'm telling you now, to follow God is foolish to the world out there because it's not logic to them. That's the lowest dimension any person can operate from. Because if I can't see it, if I can't hear it, if I can't smell it, if I can't taste it, then God does not exist. And that is the lowest dimension that many people live by. But then that comes to the second dimension, the dimension of your heart. Because we were created in the image and likeness of God. And because we want to belong to something. Now your mind doesn't register because your mind says, I don't need this person. I don't need God. But your heart says, hold on. You need to belong to something. That's where your soul comes into play. That's where your emotions come into play. And you feel like, listen, this husband, he hurts me so many times over and over and over and over. Your mind says, how can you do this? How can you keep on going back to a man that hurts you so much? But your heart says, I love him. But your heart says, I need to belong to him. And then you have this battle up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. And then you find yourself at a place where, what do I need to do? But I'm here to tell you this morning, my God is not an author of confusion. He's not a God of disorder. If you know where to make your choices from, when you know who to follow, when you know where to make your choices from, your life is destined to change this morning. I'm here to tell you this morning that your life is not in the hands of Satan. When you find your hands in the hands of a living God, hallelujah, no demon, no devil, no man, no voice that is not of God can determine your future. The reality is where do you find yourself this morning? It's where you find yourself and nobody can change it but you. You see, the reality is, is that choices that needs to be made normally in difficult situations It's not always the easy ones. But that's why you need something that can guide you. That's why I pray this morning that you will have this prayer with me and say, Holy Spirit, never depart from me. Because this world doesn't make sense. The hurt and the pain and the rejection and the disappointments and people letting you down, people that you trust, and people that backstabs you. I mean, this whole world is so messed up. It doesn't make sense. But there's something that makes sense this morning. It's the guidance of the Holy Spirit. It is the power of the Holy Spirit. It is the helper coming to pick you up. It is the helper saying, hold on, you are not alone. Church, you are not alone. You are not alone. Stop letting the devil tell you you are alone because I'm here to tell you you are not. You have destiny and purpose locked up inside of you. You might not be the favorite in people's eyes, but I can tell you now, you were the favorite when Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, giving his life for you. He says, I love you unconditionally. Why is the church not giving answers to difficult questions anymore? Why have we given up our position as being a united voice in this world? Because we don't understand the destiny of the body of Christ. The voice we have to carry, the authority we have to carry. You see, let me explain this. When a person thinks here, a pastor thinks here, he will think logically. And he will miss his destiny. When he thinks out of his heart, listen, the Bible says, God, your heart, and we'll get to scripture now. He says, if you, if you follow your heart, Be careful because out of it flows the issues of life. And the reason is, many have heard this before. When you make a decision, never make a decision when you are are emotionally. Because 99.9% when you make a decision when you are emotionally, you are making the wrong decision. 
That's why many believers find themselves making decisions logically and out of their out of their soul and emotionally, and that's when they make the most mistakes. Say, I have three minds. Do you know that you have three minds? You have the mind here, right? Scientists have now proved that there are neurons in your heart here, which means you can think with your heart. When I'm upset, where do I think? Here or here? Because if it was logically, I wouldn't have got in my car knowing that if I drive fast, I will get into an accident. Logically, I would have calculated it here and I would have not climbed into the car because logically I know speed kills. But when I'm upset, what do I do? I make a decision out of my heart, which is now emotionally upstressed and I'm emotionally vulnerable. I'm emotionally, and my heart now thinks for me. And I get into my car and now I start to race, trying to get rid of my frustrations. And what do I do? I create issues because out of the heart flows issues of life. Logically, you will say, I cannot trust people to speak my, my life decisions and my life issues and my life. But because you want to speak to somebody out of your heart and you just want to get your heart empty, you will speak to people that you shouldn't have never sp spoken to. Because you logically don't think here, you think here. That's why many believers find themselves confused. That's why when you, when you think here, it doesn't make logically sense. And you're confused because you have made decisions out of the heart. And you ask yourself the questions, who can I trust now? Who is for me and who is against me? I thank God this morning that there's a dimension I can tap into. And the word of God says, what shall they say about this? If God is for you, who can be against you, church? There's only one to trust and that is God. Because people will leave you like this. People will turn against you like this. And the devil will come in like a floodgate. But I thank God, hallelujah, there's a dimension we can tap into this morning. That God says when the enemy comes in like a floodgate, he raises the standards. Church, the thing that I want to get to this morning is that you need to walk out this church thinking differently. Making choices differently. Because at the end of the day, you are in control of your life, not God. Only when you make a choice to make Him the author and the finisher of your faith. Only when you choose to make Him help you make decisions. You see, the Holy Spirit is the helper. Not the one that will lead you. Making the choices. Unless you decide that he needs to help you. The Bible teaches us that the Holy Spirit will guide us in truth, in spirit and in truth. Say spirit. Destiny choices cannot be made here nor here, but in your spirit. There are three dimensions. You have three minds that can think. As your flesh has the, uh, the, the, the senses of, of having to see, to hear, to feel, to, um, to taste. So is your spirit. It has the same senses. The problem is, is that we don't use that dimension anymore because we don't make use of the helper anymore. You know, in, 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 in most of the time, if you look in, especially in the region that we are staying in, especially with here in Johannesburg, this is the hub. This is where things are happening fast. People don't get quiet anymore. They are so busy. I mean, they are just busy. Busy, busy. They are, do you know what kills the fire of God? One of the things, busyness. You don't get quiet to get in front of God anymore to receive fresh fire. You are so busy. You are so busy. You are so busy. You don't even make time to come and pray on a Saturday morning. You don't have, you, you, you don't have time to go even on live and say, let me, I can't come there in person. You know, God has made the gospel so easy to receive and to be a part of it. But you know, you are so busy and you can't even pray with. 
Where do we find ourselves as children of God when it comes to the reality of church? Listen to me. I'm not fighting with you this morning. I'm saying to you, are you making choices that help your destiny or are you not following your destiny anymore? When we make decisions that will determine the direction we are moving in, we must make it into account. Choices will count for you or against you. That's the reality. Every choice you make is either for you or against you. Say this out loud. The devil can't decide my future. What does it mean? You've been given the devil too much credit. The devil this and the devil that and the devil. The devil stands there and says, God, look at this guy. He, he's, got, he's saying it's me, but it, it was his choices. You see, the moment you turn away from your destiny, the moment you, you walk away from Jesus is the moment you don't make destiny choices anymore. Say the devil can't decide my well-being. He can't. But we give him authority to rule over us. We make a choice to stand back and tell him, oh, do whatever you want. The devil can't decide my destiny because God has already paid the price in full. The question is, do you believe it this morning? Do you believe that God has a bright future for you, church? And the reality is something that you need to face. You can have a preacher so much on fire for God and you can come into the presence of God and you can be so spiritually blind. You cannot, your senses of your spirit can, your spirit can be so dead. Somebody next to you will experience revival and you will sit there dead. That's the sad part of Christianity that we can't force it onto you. We are inviting you into those dimensions. I'm inviting you into the presence of God. I'm inviting you into the supernatural life. I'm inviting you to the life of abundance. I'm inviting you into a life of freedom. I'm inviting you this morning to a life where Jesus is the king of your life. Where Jesus is the Lord of your life. Where Jesus, hallelujah, is who he says he is in your life. But the reality is you need to make that choice this morning. Say first dimension. It's called the logic dimension. This is where your brain is connected to your fleshly abilities and desires. Do you know that you can't please God with the logic? You can't please God with the flesh. It's impossible. The flesh by nature is sin. You can easily make decisions and in most cases the wrong ones. Why? Because everything in the logic goes against everything in the supernatural. It is like two dimensions fighting against each other. Where does the devil win you over? In the logic. That's why Jesus says, remind, remind, remind yourself of what? Renew your mind. But how do you renew your mind? You can't renew your mind with your heart. Because your heart is unstable and out of it flows the issues of life. So when I try to use my heart to renew my mind, I am... I'm more mixed up and more messed up than ever before. <laughs> That's the reality, church. Explain to me a miracle in the logic dimension. You can't. You might be emotionally touched by a miracle, yet you can't explain it in this dimension. But your spirit understands it. You have a spirit man inside of you. Say second dimension. This is one of the most difficult dimensions a person has to face in his lifetime. Because if somebody shows you one plus one is two, that's logic. That's a simple sum. And it's easy to follow that dimension. But the most difficult dimension is the second dimension and that's where your soul is. That's where your heart is. Because what happens now, the Bible says we need to win what? Souls. Your soul needs to be saved. Because unless your soul is not saved, your spirit man stays dead. Your spirit man stays dormant. 
Your spirit man can't think for, for himself. Your spirit man is dead. As soon as your soul is saved, your spirit man is enlightened. Your spirit man comes alive. The most vulnerable and compromised dimension is where the issues of life flows out. Put on Proverbs 4 verse 23. When your soul is not saved, you will be driven by fear, anxiety, sin, pride, and desires of the flesh. That's where you will follow the fleshly desires and not the word of God. In this dimension, we can understand the scripture, what it says here. Keep your heart with all diligence. Say diligence. For out of it springs the issues of life. Scientists, listen. When they made this discovery right now, God already knew it more than 2,600 years ago. He says, guard your heart. Because he knew if you make decisions out of your heart, you can make problems for yourself. It's not just all about sad decisions. Listen to me. Where do you receive butterflies? Your heart pumps and your stomach receives butterflies. And you think, listen, this is the... Yeah, here is now the writer of the... This is the one. 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 And the question is, out of what dimension did you make that choice from? Because you can marry wrongfully. You can, you can end up in a relationship where the devil came in to destroy your destiny. And not, it was not a destiny helper, but a destiny killer. The reality is, church, that's why God says, guard your heart. Because what you love... That's why the Bible says, where your heart is... Is what? Where your heart is, is your first love. So the reality is, if Jesus, if your soul is not saved and it's not with Jesus, then he's not your first love. How can you guard your Christianity, walk with God? Christianity is a lifestyle. The Bible stands for basic instructions before leaving earth. And church, we are finding ourselves that we are following the ways of the world. We are conforming to the world. And God is calling people into holiness. God is calling people into repentance. God is calling people out of the world and into the kingdom of God. But we are so busy following the world. Because we are driven by what? Our anxieties and our fears. Because now I'm not going to fit in with the world. I will be the outcasted one. I will be the rejected one. I don't care. I am not of this world. I am of the kingdom of God. So they can cast me out. They can reject me. They don't have to like me. I don't care. But I know that I know. When the anointing comes upon my life. They don't can't refuse me. The anointing will give me access to places where no money can give. The reality church. Don't make decisions out of the second dimension, out of your heart. Unless Jesus is fully in control of your heart. I have given up everything to gain everything. I've given up everything logically here that doesn't, it didn't make sense. When God said, close your business, logically it didn't make sense. I was here so emotionally, demagor, man, So I was so confused, looking like a, two t-shirts coming out of a tumble dryer. I was hot, but give me a car. Hot for Jesus, but I didn't know what to do. That's why I needed to get to the revelation of the third dimension where we as a believer can make decisions. For. Because if I did it here, it didn't make sense. If I wanted to follow my heart, I was confused. I had to die to myself. To my desires, the fleshly desires, the logically desires. I had to come to the place where I say, listen, I do not live anymore but Christ through me. What does that mean, church? You see, the thing is, is how do you think in your heart is very important. Put on Proverbs 23 verse 7. For as he thinks in his heart. 
so is he. Eat and drink, he says to you. But his heart is not with you. So the reality is, is your heart with God or is it not? You know, there are people that will, that will sit in front of you. They will have a discussion with you. They will tell you, I'm for you. I love you. I'll support you. I'll, you know what? You are the best thing that ever happened to me. And you eat and you drink with them. But their hearts are not with you. That's why God says, be careful who you associate yourself with. Because destiny choices is very important, church. Because when you make a choice here, as you think in your heart, so are you. So as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So the hidden agenda of a person can be only outlined in due time. You will see people coming in, going in your life. How many people have come into your life? That said they will be there. And now all of a sudden they are no longer there. It was because they, they, they said something different from their lips than what their heart was thinking. Let me use this as an example. They will tell you, identity is my church and I will never leave identity. This is my home. They will even say, I prayed and God said, this is my church. And you know what they will do? In their heart they think, listen, I must just hold long enough I must, I must just, just please the, the, the pastors of this church just long enough so that I can figure out what I need to do. That's why the heart is not here. When you find yourself in a relationship, you tell the person, I love you, I want to be with you, but your heart says something different. Can you see that there are three dimensions we are, we, we are operating from as believers? So I've given you the logic dimension, the soul dimension, your heart dimension. Because as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Say the third dimension. In this dimension, believers have no limitations. I'm going to say it again. In this dimension, you do not have any limitations. In the flesh, you are limited by the laws of this dimension. The law of gravity, you can't jump up and fly. There's a law that governs you. But there's a spiritual realm, listen to me. As a person in the flesh, in the logic, I cannot see a person's future. Which means I am limited. But in the spiritual realm, the third dimension, God can open up my eyes through the gift of prophecy. I can see the current and I can see the future and I can prophesy into your life. With no limitations. Well, there is a limitation because the Bible says we see in part and we prophesy in part. So it is it, because we can't be all-knowing. God is all-knowing. But what I'm saying is, is there is no limitations when it comes. It surpasses the, the dimension of the heart and it surpasses the dimension of the logic. Are you enjoying this morning, church? Are you, are you, are you captivated by this message? All right, so I want you to, to be equipped this morning to step out of this church changed. I want you to, before you make the next decision in your life, make sure it is not here completely and completely here. It has to be from a dimension that doesn't limit you, which is called destiny choices. This is where the spirit man will be allowed to make decisions. In this realm, nothing will become impossible for you. Because the, the problem is your soul is saved. But your soul, listen, your emotional state, as you think here, so are you. Am I right if I say this? But if you think like the lowest dimension, what will happen? The logic says you are not qualified. But the spirit dimension says God doesn't call the qualified, He qualifies the called. So what happens now? You don't make a decision here, you make a decision here. Oh, I don't know if you get this revelation, church. When you think here, you are limited. When you think in the third dimension, what we call the supernatural dimension or the spiritual realm, 
It is where God will make the impossible possible. When your spirits are connected with the Holy Spirit, we are connected deep onto deep. What casts your soul down? What allows your emotions to be down? What causes you to be negative? What causes you to be at a place where you want to take your own life and give up? It's when you make decisions out of the lowest dimension, the logic dimension. Because you make decisions on what you can't understand. We cannot understand God. We have to study Him. And yet we will not understand Him. (laughs) This is why at Identity Church we don't just study God. We are experiencing Him. We are receiving His presence. We receive His Holy Spirit. We receive His glory. And we operate under the anointing. Because you cannot study God. The Bible is there to express Him. It's not to limit Him. And now how many people limit God by the Word of God? <sighs> Put on Psalms 42 verse 4 to 8. When I remember these things, I pour out my soul within me. Say, my soul. Where? Within me. Where is your soul? It's within you, within your heart. Not in your mind. Okay? For I used to go with the multitude. Say the world. Doesn't go to the church. I went with them to the house of God. With the voice of joy and praise. You see there was a time in the word of God where people didn't turn away from God. They ran to God. Today we live in a generation and a society that portrays God as a weak God. They even, did you see this whole parade they did in, in, in overseas where Jesus was mocked? Where the devil dragged my God and the next day tsunamis hit that nation? Because my God is not mocked. But here's something, here's something, I want you to get to something tonight, uh, today. In those days, the multitude went to church. The Bible says in the last of the last days, good shall be called evil and evil shall be called good. The Bible says in the last days, people will become lovers of themselves. Boasters. Lovers of money. I thank God I don't have a lot of money. Yet. You see, the thing is, God had to shape my character that I don't think to use money here or use money here. But from the spiritual realm where God says there will be no limitations. Why I have to be equipped with money? I don't love money. But I need money to employ evangelists. I need money to build a bigger church. I need money. Listen, do you guys understand this? I want more money. Why? Not because I love the money, but because I need the money because money makes the world turn around. So what am I saying here? I used to think here and here and not in my spirit. I was operating in the the logic dimension because when people say you don't have, you don't need money, it's it's the baddest advice, the worst advice people can give you. All of us need money. Why churches are afraid to preach about money? I don't know. I thank God. God broke that religion spirit. And I'm here to tell you that God wants to prosper you. God wants to bless you. God wants to make you a millionaire and a billionaire. Why are we lying to ourselves? You know, when we come to church, no, I don't need money, pastor. You know, ah, God is so good for me. You know, ah, you know, I have a roof on my head. I've got shoes on my feet. Got food on my table. You know that song. I don't need money. That's why you don't have money. Because you don't want it. And the the saddest part is, we are preaching uh, poverty and not that God wants to set you free. Jesus says, I have come to give you life. And life in abundance. That means that you will have money in abundance. I don't know if you received that this morning, but I'm here to tell you that you will receive money in abundance. But the problem is your soul is casted down. 
Because you, you go to the house of God with joy and praises with the multitude that kept a pilgrim feast. Next verse. Why are you cast down, O my soul? David says to his soul, do you know that you can speak to your soul? But here's something I want to ask you. When you speak to your soul, must you speak out of your logic dimension or your spirit dimension? Because when you speak here to your soul, nothing will make sense. You will have this battle going up, down, up, down, up, down. Why are you cast down, O oh my soul? And why are you dis uh, dissuaded within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise Him. For the help of His countenance. What happens here is, this is the decision of destiny made. That, listen, even though my soul is cast down within me, but my spirit man will praise God. Even though I don't see the beloved land, even though I don't see the solution, even though I don't see the breakthrough, yet I don't see yet my healing. But I shall praise Him. You cannot praise God with logic. So you can't praise Him here. It doesn't make sense. Because you can't see Him, you can't hear Him, you can't smell Him, you can't taste Him. Because this dimension is limited. But your spirit man vibrates inside of you. You know what vibrates inside of you when the fear of God comes upon you? It's not your soul and it's neither your, your, your mind, your flesh. But it's your spirit that knows the King of Kings is here. His holiness is here. The Lord of Lords is here. It is your spirit that responds to the supernatural. You can't please God in the natural. It's impossible. So David says, For I shall yet praise Him for the help of His countenance. Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore I will remember you from the land of the Jordan and from the heights of Hermon, from the hill of Mazar. Next verse. Say deep, calls on to deep. This is where your spirit is connected to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> this is where it doesn't make sense here. This is where you are emotionally. But when you are connected with your spirit deep on to deep, this is where you start to trust God and not your logic. This is where you start to trust God and not your emotions. But you are connected deep on to deep. You see, when your soul is casted down and you are so emotional, you need to be connected deep onto deep with the, with the Father in heaven. You need to be connected deep onto deep. He says, deep calls onto deep and the noise of your waterfalls. What is waterfalls represent in the word of God, especially in this sentence? It represents living water. It represents peace. It represents a place, God says in Psalms 23, He will lay you down. Where? In waters. Where? Where there's peace. He will lay you down. Where there's no more anxiety. But you need to be connected deep onto deep. All your waves and billows have gone over me. The Lord will command His loving kindness in the daytime. And in the night His song shall be with me. A prayer to God of my life. So you can't pray to God here. You can't pray to God with your, with your emotional state. But when you connect deep onto deep and your spirit cries out to God. When your spirit is connected deep onto deep in this dimension is where the Bible becomes the light for your souls and your flesh will follow the word of God is what it's a food lamp for my feet but you know what many of you will walk out this church and still follow your logic you will go out this church and you will make decisions with your heart and you will still stay confused and you will still miss your destiny because you do not listen to what I'm trying to teach you this morning it's because you are stubborn And you don't want to hear this, but I'm here to tell you straight in your face because you are stubborn. You don't want to accept the truth. You want to make up your own truth here and you believe your own lies in your heart. Because so as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. This is what the word of God says. Let I rather be the one that upsets you this morning and say, oh, Apostle, no, no, let be mad at me, it's fine. 
But let me rather tell you the truth so you the truth can set you free. Because this is at the dimension where God directs your footsteps. Because the Bible, listen to me, I love the Word of God. I don't know, do you love the Word of God? Amen. He has given us the Word of God to direct us, Pastor Chris. Say, as a man think in his heart, so is he. But do you know how many people misinterpret that scripture? Because now, you can think with the logic or you can think with your spirit. You can think by the ways of the world or you can think by the way of the word of God. Now watch this. Put on Proverbs 16 verse 9. A man's heart plans his way. Now, first of all, the first scripture said, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. But here is something that the Word of God says, A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. This is where you need to get understanding and revelation that only when you allow God to direct your footsteps, do you think God directs your footsteps when you go into a club and, and, and you, you, you drink and you use drugs? Do you think that God directs your footsteps when you go to the whorehouse and sleep around and commit adultery? Do you think God uh, directs your footsteps when you get into conversations and gossip? Do you think God directs your footsteps when you go and steal people's stuff? Do you think God directs your footsteps when you tell lies? No. Don't tell me then God directs your footsteps. You have to be connected deep onto deep. You have to be connected onto the spiritual realm. You have to connect tonight in your life. And my church is so dark, I keep on thinking it's tonight. So for all your religious people out there, I still love you. Maybe we must just, just for all the religious people, Pastor Charles, when we plant another church, just make it all white. You know, the holiness is not here because it's all darkness. I don't know. Then we'll have all our holy services there and we'll have all our party services. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just making a joke. But By the way, identity is making a lot of churches upset, by the way. I don't know why. Why are we making people upset? We are supposed to be the salt. <laughs> Amen. Let us always give love. So maybe I mustn't be arrogant with that, Pastor. Maybe I must just humble myself and, and apologize. I don't know. So, Pastor, if you, if you, I'm sorry. But the Bible says a man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. But my God cannot direct my footsteps if I don't allow him to make it for me. We need the word of God, the Holy Spirit, to operate within this dimension with me by becoming obedient to the word of God that allows us the access to operate in that dimension. So how do God direct my footsteps? That when I want to make a decision that I know it goes against the word of God, I am not following logic, I'm not following my heart, but I'm following the word of God. That helps me to make destiny choices. So when you operate in that dimension, we look at the following scripture. John 7, verse 37 to 39. On the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out. Say, cried out. Jesus is standing there ready and he's crying and he says, listen to me. Come with me. Operate with me in this dimension. You are crying out to God. And I'm here telling you that Jesus is busy crying out to you. You are calling out, where is God? And he says, I'm right here. The reality is that you are not connected to him deep on to deep and you're confused because you are not operating in the spiritual dimension, but in the logic dimension or out of the dimension of the heart. Jesus stood up and cried out saying, if anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. You see, we're drinking from the logic dimension from what the world gives us. 
those who we allow within our close circle comes close to our hearts. And we drink of them. But there's a dimension where Jesus says, I'm crying out to you saying, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Verse 38. He who believes in me. You see, a lot of people believe in Jesus, but they stop there. They have won the battle here and they believe Jesus here. The problem is they don't believe as the scripture says. So they believe in their hearts that Jesus is alive. They believe in their hearts that Jesus will come to my rescue. They believe in their hearts that Jesus will direct their footsteps. But the problem is, Jesus said, he who believes in me as the scriptures has said. So which means the word of God is the foundation. The word of God is the direction. The word of God is basic instructions before leaving earth. You need to follow an instruction. You need direction, follow the word of God. You are confused, follow the word of God. You don't know what to do, listen to the word of God. You don't know what choice to make, listen to the word of God. You don't know what your future looks like, listen to the word of God. You don't know if you can be healed, listen to the word of God. You don't know if you can prosper, listen to the word of God. Oh, the devil is a liar because I'm going to listen to the word of God this morning. I'm getting excited. You know why? Because if I read the word of God, the devil is in trouble. If I read the word of God, I have a, oh man, I'm telling you now, we have been called, hallelujah, as a highly royal priesthood and we have been set apart. We have been chosen for a time such as now. And I'm telling you now, the devil will not win. He will not defeat you. But your soul has been casted out. And I'm here to tell you, Jesus is busy crying out and he says, He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. The problem is rivers of living water is not flowing out of your heart because you never guarded your heart. You never protected your heart. You never made sure that what goes in. The Bible says it is not what goes in that is sin, but what comes out. So when you allow a person into your life, it's not sin. But what comes out of that relationship becomes sin. You know, this man was sitting on a pavement. He lost everything. He was sitting with a few bags and a few boxes. Been put out of his house. His marriage failed. His business failed. And he goes through the photos and he looks at his photos and he says, this type of life, was it all worth it? And then he opens the next box and he finds an empty beer bottle and he looks at it and he says, you have costed me my wife. And he throws the empty bottle and he breaks it. And he looks in the next box and he finds another empty bottle of Jack Daniels. And he looks at it and he says, and you've costed me my business. And he throws the empty bottle. And at that point in time, he could make the right decisions if he understood his destiny and his purpose. But because he was confused here and here. He didn't have the Holy Spirit. He didn't have the word of God in his life. He picked up a next box. And in that box is a full bottle of, of uh, I don't know, what did, what did you guys drink? A bottle of Ricky Low, Richie Low, I don't know, tequila. And this bottle is still full of tequila. And he looks at this bottle and he says, you have nothing yet to do with this. You just wait here. I'll get to you later. The problem is the answer is not at the bottom of the bottle. The answer is in the word of God. 
If you want the living water, stop looking at alcohol. Stop looking at places where God is not. Stop looking at a place where God is found. And that is in the word of God. Stop looking to find God in your wife, in your children, in your business, in a place where God is not. Find Him in the word of God, church. Maybe you need to be that person that goes to that person that's sitting on the pavement. Take that bottle of tequila like I did with Stephen many years ago. His wife phoned me and says, Pastor, you need to come and help. What bottle did you have, Stephen? A bottle of Captain Morgan. You see, the devil was the captain of his life. I stepped in his house and I said to him, if you open this bottle and you don't throw it down the drain, you will miss the opportunity to live for God. You will miss the opportunity to have a happily marriage. You will miss the opportunity to be a happy father. You will miss the opportunity to be a husband to your wife and a father to your children. You will miss to be a person that people can look up. Today, he's not drinking anymore. He's giving God all the glory. You can go and watch his TikTok videos. He's giving God all the glory. You see, at that moment, he didn't make, it didn't make logic here because he said, but pastor, if I drink, I feel better, but the next morning it's worse. You see, a decision made here and here is not the answer, church. But he made a decision that day and he said, hold on. I don't know completely what God has in store for me. But I don't know how it will happen. But all I know is, if the word of God says it's wrong, it's wrong. And I will follow the word of God. We have the Holy Spirit, church. And he can give us living water. Verse 39 says the following. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Jesus has been glorified. The grave is empty. Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father. He is here this morning and the Holy Spirit this morning can let living waters flow from your heart. Are you ready, church, this morning to say, Lord, from this day forward, I'm not going to make a decision here. I'm not going to make a decision here. But I'm going to make a decision based on the word of God. Come on, give Jesus a praise, church. Just as you remain sitting, I want us to bring out the communion quickly. And I want this thing in your heart this morning that is troubling you. Your concerns, your fears, your worries, your anxieties, your depression. Maybe you are facing suicidal thoughts. I don't know what you are going through. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus is here to set you free. The blood of Jesus has the ability and the power. He, it, it, listen to me. Jesus has defeated sin and death. He is here to tell you this morning that he's crying out to you and saying, listen. If you thirst for Him, living water will flow from your heart, not issues. How do you know that there's issues out of your life? Just be honest with yourself. <laughs> How do you know living water is flowing? The Bible says you will carry the fruits of it. Amen? So as they hand out the elements... Get your heart ready. And allow the Holy Spirit this morning to, to minister unto you. Just show me by hand, Pastor Charles, if everybody you have received, please. Just make sure. This morning, I want to do something special when we take communion. Most of us make decisions while we are standing. 
and the devil knocks us around and he knocks us over. Just put on Mark chapter number 14, verse 22 to 25 for me, please. Does everybody have? Almost. Beautiful. It's beautiful to see the church is almost to capacity when it comes to communion. It's one of the most important services within a month where we have the opportunity to come together as brothers and sisters at a place of worship and sit at the table with Jesus. But I want to encourage you to do it at home as well. Can I just see by the... By the the raising of hands who feels sometimes there's like a curse or a, a, a negative spirit in your life operating just raise your hands I see the hands praise God thank you for being honest because here's something I'm going to pray for you and lay hands on you I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to minister to you because you see the thing is is that that dimension so the question is, where do you experience that? Is it in your mind? Is it in your soul? Or do you feel it in the Spirit? You see, the Holy Spirit is the helper. And He can help you this morning. And God can minister to you. God can tell you, listen, you can be set free this morning. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom, there's liberty, and there's joy. Say to yourself this morning, I will be set free from every family curse, from every bloodline curse, and from every generational curse. Say, I will receive healing in my mind, in my soul, and in my spirit. Say, complete restoration. Say, my emotional state. I call it into order. Say, God is the author and the finisher of my faith I give my life to him this morning afresh I invite the Holy Spirit into my life to help me in Jesus mighty name as you take the bread right now I want to read this and as they were eating Jesus took the bread he blessed and broke it and gave it to them and said take eat this is my body. What the symbol is behind it is, is that when you eat this, this don't feed the dimension of the logic because how can we eat the body of, of Jesus? This is not food for your mind, neither for your soul, but this is food for your spirit. This is how you connect deep onto deep with the body of Jesus Christ. This is where you surpass your soul, your, your, your heart, this is where you surpasses your mind, your logic. Because you activate your faith and you say, but hold on, I'm making destiny choices in my life by becoming one with Christ. Jesus says to the Father, let them become one in me like I am in you and you in me. So what does it mean? Now we are, be able, we are able to connect deep onto deep. This is a destiny choice. That's why the Bible says, do it as many times as possible. Every time you sit at the table of Jesus and you take and partake in communion, when you take this element, when you take this bread, you are connected deep onto deep with God. So Father, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, as we take this bread, as we make a decision right now, Lord, to sit at your table, we bless this bread. We bless your body. We bless your life. We bless what you have done for us. 
We bless your holy name. We worship your name, Lord. We know that through the stripes of Jesus Christ, we are healed. And Lord, this morning, I pray that every sickness, every emotional disorder, we call it in order and we call it into the kingdom of God and we call it deep onto deep. And we pray, God, that you will restore us into the image and in the likeness that what you have created us in. In Jesus' mighty name, you may take the bread. Mark chapter 14 verse 23 says, Then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them. And they all drank from it. Say he gave thanks. Why do we pray before we take it? We give thanks unto the Father. We give thanks unto God saying, thank you that we can partake in this. Okay, this is why it's not just because it's the, w- the way we do it because we think it's a good way. No, we do it as Jesus have done it. So we give thanks to the Father. Heavenly Father, thank you that you've given your only begotten Son for His blood that, ha- that was shed on the cross, for His blood that has paid the price, for a lamb that was slaughtered. Thank you, God, that this blood represents the Lion of Judah. Thank you that this blood represents my freedom. Thank you that this blood has purchased my soul. Thank you that this blood, Lord, has paid a price that I could not pay. Thank you that this blood gives me access to the spiritual realm, the third dimension, for my life to never be the same. Then he took the cup and he had given thanks. He gave it to them and they all drank from it. And he said to them, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many, not for all. You see, we quote so quickly, Jesus died for everyone. Yes, he, it, it, it is so. But the problem is not everybody chooses him. Because people don't step into their destiny. They don't make destiny choices. They would rather go and be with the world than be in the house of God and make destiny choices to say, Lord, I choose you. That is the reality, church. That's why God says, this is my blood of the new covenant, which, shed, which is shed for many. Only those who choose it. So today, we give thanks unto Jesus that we can be a part of this. Those that said, I think that sometimes there's a negative force working against me. You are absolutely right. The devil is not asleep. The devil is not lazy. The devil will not give up. The devil will fight as hard as possible until the day you lay your head to rest. But I thank God for the Holy Spirit. I thank God for the blood of Jesus. I thank God that we are not alone. May we drink to God and may we drink unto Jesus and say, Lord, thank you that your blood is the final covenant and I am no longer bound to this world, that I have been set free by the blood of Jesus Christ. You may drink it. What a powerful way to become deep unto deep with God. What a powerful way to be united. What a powerful way to be empowered. What a powerful way to be uplifted this morning. Amen. I want the worship team to come up. And we're going to do one song. And we're going to worship the King of Kings for what He has done. But also for what He is going to do in your life. Amen. Let us all stand. Father, as we worship you right now, Lord, I pray that your presence will come. That you will minister unto your people, God. Lord, in this lifetime, we need a supernatural intervention. Lord, in this lifetime, in this generation, Lord, we are crying out to you. Lord, we are crying out to you. Let living water flow from our hearts. Lord, remove things that is not of you. Give us a pure heart. Renew our minds. Set us free this morning. Let us walk into your perfect world, God. Help us to make destiny choices. Help us to please you and not please men. 
Thank you for watching, it has been great to have you with us. Remember to stay connected on all social media platforms. Go and check out our website www.identitychurch.cosa to partner with this ministry and together we can be the change.